Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is the weekly news roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today we'll be covering the privacy and the business news sections. So hang on by. All right, let's go ahead and start with Zoom is finally getting its end-to-end -end encryption. And uh, of course they came out initially like, we've got end-to-end -end encryption. And it turns out they were completely lying about it. And it's the whole world went into total lockdown and Zoom being the most user-friendly video conferencing system out there, got the eye of Sauron focused directly on it. We found out that it was about a, a, just about as much of a privacy nightmare as Facebook is. And so they're like, well, okay. And then they backed things back a little bit. Then they made some quick patch changes and they're finally rolling out end-to-end -end encryption next week. Actually, I really like the way they're implementing it though. They did a neat implementation with, instead of encrypting everything through the central Zoom server, which would give Zoom the ability to decrypt it, they did not do that route. The host computer is creating the encryption keys and those encryption keys are staying on that host computer. And then all of the conferencing is moved off of that individual host computer. Now I think there might be some areas where if the host computer has a bad internet connection, that that will probably render itself into a couple little problems. Ultimately though, this is the best case for privacy. So Zoom starting with a privacy nightmare might end up being a very good case for privacy and that the decryption in between it is going to be dependent on that host computer and to my knowledge, the keys terminate once the individual call is over. So very interesting way of implementing end-to-end -end encryption. So who knows, maybe this is striking some positives for Zoom and maybe we start looking at it and question, huh, maybe it's something we go back and have a look at again. Just a thought. I'm not totally endorsing it yet. Um, there could be some issues with that, or I could have some of that not quite as correct, but I'll look into it a little bit further. That being said, however, uh, they are finally implementing that end-to-end -end encryption, and it's implemented in a very good way. All right. Um, an undocumented backdoor covertly takes snapshots found in kids, kids smartwatches. People, stop giving your children smartwatches. Keep them as far away from as much technology as you possibly can for as long as possible. Give them small little doses here and there. Teach them how to use it appropriate. Don't be like, here, have a smartwatch. Put it on. And these are the same watches we talked about before. The X4 made, joint, uh, made and jointly developed in China raises some concerns. Well, it turns out that the concerns are very um, justified. It turns out that if you send an encrypted text message to the watch, it can trigger a series of calls they found down here at the bottom. There is one application called Wiretap Incoming. Another one, Wiretap by Callback. Command Log Upload remote snapshot and send SMS location. So in other words, it's not even hackers. It's people who have access to the ping back home network of this kid's children's smartwatch can have, they can send calls in and covertly dump locations, snapshots from the watch photographs. It can do logs. It can do pretty much anything that there is. It can keep a record of this. And this is why you don't want this. Now this photo here is the hacker. Uh, he he uh, soldered some uh, USB pins on the back of the watch just to see what he could do. And this is how he was able to find all these in in interesting little codes. Uh, but these are the problems that we have. We do not need smart devices with our children. Very few positive applications, particularly when they can be now. I mean, what if the guys are like, hey, um, child exploitation ring. Let's get the children in here and you know exactly where these children are. All right, let's go. Hey, looks like the kid is walking down a back road by night. We can tell from the GPS tracker. Go get them, you know? That's how dangerous this stuff is. Don't be thinking, that's a crazy extreme thing. This is a dangerous thing. You do not want location trackers on your children. Okay, it's better if they don't have them. Sure, there's odd scenarios you might want them on, so you could track and follow them around on a map. 
But if those are hackable by other people, it raises more issues than it solves. So keep that in mind. Keep those smart devices away from your children. Next story, Microsoft is tweaking the Windows 10 setup with a new customization screen. Uh, I did notice that there's nothing in here about changing privacy settings because they don't want you to change privacy settings. Hey, this is Windows 10. Every single time you push any update, no matter how minor, oh, you just install the printer, we're gonna update the printer driver. Oh, let's go ahead and just change the privacy settings back to collect everything, yay. That's what Windows likes to do. So you can set up a system restore, system image, uh, startup repairs. Those are some of the things. Okay, here's the customization. So you can set it up for a gaming, for family, for creativity, for business, for entertainment, for schoolwork, but you don't necessarily have the tweaks on the front. And yeah, there are some things during the setup screen to enable or disable a few of the privacy settings, but not nearly close to all of them. So, with that being said, uh, with that being said, Windows 10 is doing some new customization to, you know, give us more illusion of control as they have <laughs> taken away the real power. Sony PlayStation is going to start listening to your private chats as you're playing your games there. You got your headphones on, you're talking to people. Well, the new terms of service of using this has to have you agreeing to have your voice recorded and possibly sent to and evaluated. I'm wondering if the child hooks this up, if that will be found to be illegal because the child is not capable of granting or entering into a contract is not capable of agreeing. Or if the child agrees because it's a PlayStation, who's going to oh, turn the PlayStation on? Oh, I disagree with all these terms. I won't use these services. But uh, it is a little bit uh, creepy. So here's the quick menu. Voice chats may be recorded for moderation by joining you agree to be recorded. But then there is a longer screen, which you may not be able to read it, so I'll go ahead and read it for you here. It says, we want PlayStation Network to be fun for everyone, which is why we have a community code of conduct. Please be aware that voice chats and parties may be recorded and sent to us by users. By participating in voice chats, you agree to your voice being recorded. When behaviors that violate the community code of conduct are reported, PlayStation safely will review the reports to check if there have been genuine violations. Yeah, uh, PlayStation safety will resign. I think I said safely. Uh, final paragraph here, or final sentence. These recordings will be used only for safety and moderation pur purposes. <laughs> I, I doubt it. I doubt it. But I wonder if, uh, I mean, what is this? So you're going to be playing a game and somebody's going to be like, he hurt my feelings. Go ban him. He hurt my feelings. What do you say? Die when you're playing like Black Ops or something? I mean, th I, that's kind of what you do, you know? I mean, really. Uh, so, yeah. If you're uh, using PlayStation, you are uh, getting recorded now. So, uh, does that make you feel good? Does it make you feel good? Cornell researchers create an earphone that can track facial expressions and they even work if you're wearing a mask. So there you have it. So now you can get your facial expressions. Now we just need a mask that's like a, a projection screen from the back and your facial expressions will be projected as the computer interprets it on the top of the mask. That would be interesting, right? Very cool. So researchers from Cornell have created an earphone system that can track facial expressions. Basically, uh, what it's going to do is it sits on here. You can kind of see what it looks like. It's got these like cameras and other sensors and devices and things like this. And it's going to be tracking. So here's what he actually did on captured video. And here is what the 3D prediction of the face looked like. That's a little creepy. And apparently it turns um, Asians into black guys. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so let's see, let me turn off any audio here. Let's see if, uh, there's any reconstruction here going on. So it goes through the information. Okay. He's wearing a mask. So this is what the model looks like. Okay. So they train the model with a cut open mask. It's exciting. So it's basically measuring key points around your eyes around your face you can see up here the little key points there are it kind of looks like does that not kind of look like the Cheshire cat fading into existence up here <laughs> look out kid run kid the Cheshire cat's coming for you 
And so here is the captured video and the 3D driven modeled face. How long before they force us to wear these things? Oh Lord. <clears throat> here it is with a mask. Oh Lord, people, this is a strange world we are entering. <laughs> Strange world we're entering. I'm going to ward this thing off with my bag of temptations here. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Is that a little creepy or is that, I don't know, <laughs> long before they force that on you, you know. It's, they add in the extra components to implant memories into your head. So now you think you're guilty. All right. Google handed over to police. Okay, the headline of this is written bad. Let me try and redo the headline. Like I had to read this like 10 times, figure out what in the world's going on. I still only partially got it. You read the article. So people search for keywords. Police wanted all people who searched for those keywords. Google handed over the data on who searched for those keywords. That's basically what's going on. So in this case, they did actually catch the guy they're looking for. They're looking for the guy who was searching for this particular address and the IP address was able to search for this. And so even if you're not logged into a Google account, Google can still track your IP address to the keywords that you use searching on Google. People, this is why you want to use Start Page or maybe DuckDuckGo. Don't use Google because they're doing this. And uh, you can actually see, and they have large snippets of the court document here. Basically it's like, hey, here's the IP address here. And we know this guy searched for the IP address at this point in time. He also searched for how to burn down a house. Um, I think there's something like how to kill somebody or something in there as well. Oh, where can I buy um, uh, 50, uh, 0.05 custom machine gun, like 50 caliber machine gun, I guess. Uh, searching for witness intimidation and countries that don't have extradition with the United States. Very suspicious terms, guys. Stop using Google. Particularly pro-criminal tip, if you're going to commit crimes with search engine terms, don't do it there. That's as bad as going to Amazon and buying um, nails, a pressure cooker, and some fertilizer. Okay, just don't do it. Just don't do it. It's insane. Okay, but that is still kind of scary that a blanket warrant could go out. Now, my guess is that if enough of these cases come to the forefront, it's going to get lumped into the same group as the geofence warrants. That's going to be my guess down the road. But as for now, we don't have any precedent. So there's nothing wrong with Google giving up all of the IP addresses and the information of the people who search for certain search terms. So very interesting stuff. All right. And on to our last story, the HomePod Mini and the next Apple TV may use ultra wideband to track your location around the house. So this is basically like LiDAR. And in fact, in the new iPhones, they actually have LiDAR chips micro implanted inside of them. So they basically have radar chips built in. And so now your Apple devices, for whatever reason, are going to be equipped with radar which can be used to 3D map your house and track your movements throughout. And so not a lot more to say about this, except that's a little creepy. So um, let's see, Pro, uh, 2020 iPad Pro lacks the U1 chip. However, it is included in the Apple Watch 6 series, provides reassurance that Apple's still committed to working with ultra wide man, which is frightening. Uh, the most high profile case appears to be the AirTags item trackers that have yet to launch. So this is kind of like Amazon's sidewalk project. In June, Apple also opened up its U1 chip to developers. So nearby interaction framework for iOS 14 can stream distance and relative direction between U1 equipped devices. So now third party developers can utilize the U1 radar chip to see what you're doing. I just feel so comforted by this. I just will absolutely have to go get me some of these home pods so Apple can map my house and track me. And not just Apple, but third party app developers. That sounds glorious. So let me know your thoughts to this one down below. 
Before we switch over to business, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a variety of affiliates. The one I will highlight now is Mint Mobile, which have just recently added an unlimited plan. These guys do use the T-Mobile network. I've actually been on Mint Mobile now for, I think, 11 months now. I put mine in just uh, right around Thanksgiving-ish time is when I started testing it. And then I actually put it on my primary phone. Actually, it was right around Christmas. So, so I'm going on 10 months now. Zero problems. Pricing is amazing. I use almost no data. So I use this $15 per month plan, which uh, if you buy it for three months out, it's going to cost you $75 for three full months of service. Uh, if you go, uh, but if you go up to like a one year, it's going to be $15 a month. So what is it? 180, I think for the entire year of service. And if you go on vacation one month and need more mobile data because you're on vacation, you can actually just add an extra couple gigabytes of data into your account any given month as well. So definitely have a look at mint mobile tlm.li forward slash MM for more information. On to the business news. So Uber is now spamming users with a political push notification ahead of a key gig worker vote, which by the way is a violation of the terms of service, at least for Apple. And so they really, 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 really do not want Proposition 22 to pass, which is in California. This is the ruling in California that is saying that Uber has to treat their, you know, workers as employees because, you know, it makes their company more money and stuff rather than helping out employees. And as a result, when you actually start looking at what employees versus contractors have to pay, it does turn out that Uber drivers don't actually make as much money as they think they make when you boil it down to the tax law. Proposition 22 in California is supposed to balance this out by declaring that gig workers are considered employees and cannot be necessarily considered independent contractors. And so they have started sending out push notifications telling people that uh, they should be voting against Proposition 22, which actually turns out to be a violation of the terms of service. But you think that these co that the big tech companies are going to kick Uber off their platform? Of course not. But nevertheless, nothing like paying Apple 30% of your money to go and get a ride across town, right? Um, so, but so many people are using it. But apparently it's really making a lot of people mad. So we got some nice tweets here. Thanks, Uber, for unwanted push notifications um, uh, of a political ad. At Apple Dev, agreement clearly says 4.5.3, do not use Apple services to spam, fish, or send unsolicited messages to customers, including post, uh, push notifications, etc., or you'll be removed from the developer program. Apple, we're waiting for you to consistently apply your standards and kick Uber off now. Please. Hey, Uber, can you stop sending political push notifications to my phone? We get it. You don't want to pay your employees a livable wage or give them medical insurance. You've made that very clear. <laughs> Ooh, I love the passive aggressiveness of that one. Uber just sent me push notifications that suggest I would be killing people if I voted no on Proposition 22. Who approved this at Uber? You know, Travis is just back in the helm. Come on. He's just back to destroy the company more. Uh, of course, their uh, PR person started running their mouth. We know a PR person's lying when their lips are moving. Um, it's been updated to include the message that said, uh, what was that? Sharing voice of tens of thousands of drivers, 72% of whom support Proposition 22 with millions of riders in California to keep them informed on the stakes of the issue. In other words, yes, we're going to continue pushing our political garbage despite it violates Apple's and probably uh, Google's terms for being in the App Store. So... You know, <laughs> very interesting. Thank you, Uber. You are totally awesome and full of integrity. And this is why, guys, every time that you call an Uber, you club a baby unicorn. Don't call Ubers, okay? Don't call Ubers. All right. Moving on. U.S. Transportation Command to study the use of SpaceX rockets to move cargo around the world. This is an interesting case. So what they want to do is instead of having to throw stuff on a shipping, you know, on a giant ship, they just want to say, all right, hey, I just ordered my stuff. How'd you like to have 
same day delivery of stuff ordered from China. It's right out of the factory. The, the little 10 year old that just finished making your product over in China hands it out to the delivery guy. He runs on down the tarmac, heaves it into the window of the rocket ship. It flies on across the, across the world, lands down in, um, uh, lands down there in, in San Francisco and a drone flies up, grabs that little thing and flies it on off and drops it on your door an hour and a half later. Sounds pretty cool. But if you notice from this photograph here, you see that there seems to be a whole lot of greenhouse gases affected in launching one of these bad boys. And so you would really think that while they're kind of doing this, you'd really think Greta Thunberg would be going, how dare you, how dare you? And with all this crap, like who is thinking, hmm, maybe the environmental impact is just not worth shipping my stuff across the world in 22 seconds. Let's just go ahead and throw it on the barge where it actually consumes a little bit less fuel. Or maybe it just does consume the same amount of fuel. It's just that the rocket pushes it unified in one specific location and that's all there is to it. So very interesting, but nevertheless, they are looking at the possibility of same day delivery of stuff around the whole world utilizing SpaceX rockets. Um, very interesting though, very interesting. Who knows, maybe they can use less fuel as long as they're staying in the orbit. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? So graphics cards manufactured, uh, graphics cards manufacturer apologizes after subsidiary is caught scalping RTX through, uh, 30, 80, and 30, 90s on eBay. So, uh, can, well, is this guy gonna load? Apparently it does not like my ad blocker or something. I'm actually on my ad blocker web browser this time. So uh, MSI uh, has a subsidiary company called Starlet Partner. They were caught price gouging graphics cards on eBay at massively inflated costs. So the, uh, MR, uh, MSRP is $759, they were selling it for $1589 because, hey, we need graphics cards. Computer parts are in short supply right now. So, um, they sold these four cards for $1,300 and eight units uh, sold for up to $2,500. So, MSI Gaming uh, has to come out. Uh, Starlet Partner is an individual sales subsidiary Working under MSI, they carry excessive excess inventory and refurbished items and would not be given newly released products such as a GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards as such. We have conducted an investigation and found that an error allowed them to access inventory and they were not permitted to handle. So uh, Starlet Partner has been instructed to contact individual customers who purchase these graphic cards and offer two options, return the product and receive a full refund or a partial refund of the amount paid over the MS, uh, MSRP. Moving forward, MSI will enforce stricter policy to avoid situations. I can stand behind that company response. That's a good response from a company. There's always gonna be issues that pop up MSI, hey, you keep my business on this response because that was really good response. So there you have it. Um, very nice. Let me know. Were, were you one of the people who bought one of these things and are you going to be reaching out for your refund? My guess is, hey, just give me the difference down to MSRP because the thing's a good graphics card, man. All right. Apple's iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini will cost an extra $30 if you're not an AT&T or Verizon customer. So um, basically it costs you a, a, a month extra of your Mint Mobile plan if you wanna buy it. So very interesting. In United States, if you are buying the phone and you are not with AT&T or Verizon, it is going to cost you extra. Even if you buy it directly from them, they're gonna be like, all right, if you activate it on AT&T or Verizon, we're gonna give you a $30 um, you know, a $30 rebate, but otherwise it's going to cost you a little bit more. And then there's some extra prices on, um, you know, some extra prices on, uh, different models and stuff like that. But there we have it. So is this not corporate collusion colluding for higher prices for certain networks? What is behind this? Just kind of an interesting thing that I don't really want my, my radar activated phone on AT&T or Verizon anyway, but Whatever, that's the case. And finally, a, uh, FCC uh, Asia Shut Your Pie Hole is going to take aim at Section 230 protections for social media. 
So the FCC will look at a proposal to weaken liability protections for social media companies that fact check the president's posts. Now, this seems to be more in related to the um, giant, uh, was it um, New York, was it New York Post or New York Times article this week that just kind of, uh, kind of put Facebook and Twitter kind of in a bad spot. Now, the reason I wanted to address this here is because companies generally throughout history, if they figured out how to regulate themselves, then it prevented government regulation. And if you have the option to regulate yourself and maintain some degree of moral eth uh, uh, ethics, then that's always better than the government coming down and telling you what to do because government tends to destroy stuff. Government does tend to destroy stuff. Um, and so throughout history, if you look at the movie rating systems, if you look at the video game rating systems, even, even that very dubious parental advisory explicit lyrics on music albums, including the Frank Zappa album that didn't have a single word on it, Go figure. Um, then what you'll find is that all of these things happened in response that it was moving up to a point where if the company did not step in and regulate itself, they were going to get regulated by the government. And the companies looked at the options and said, let's regulate ourselves. Well, in this crazy over the top extremist based world we're in right now, these social media companies are too stupid to recognize when they've crossed the line. And so they're doing stupid stuff and they're going to be opening them, not only themselves, but every other company like them open to government regulation. So they pretty much have like one chance to stop it. They can come in with a brand new standard, open up and say, these are the conditions by which we block something under and maintain this 230 protection. These are the cases we don't. And our feelings about the matter can't have a role in this. If they do this, they have one chance of saving 230. But if they don't, and they probably won't because they've lost their ever loving mind, then we are going to start seeing more government regulation on big companies, which would be a bad thing. Now, if you're interested in the history of the ratings on games and on movies and stuff, I actually wrote about that quite extensively in my book called I Am Not Amused. And uh, we covered a lot of the media entertainment perspective from the, from the Christian perspective, uh, which was a completely different book. It would blow your mind away the way we wrote that, where it's not just all this stuff is bad because it's not Christian, which is a stupid approach to take. But if you are actually interested in that book, uh, you can actually find it. Um, you can actually find it on my main website, which is at ourwalkingchrist.com. I'll go ahead and link that in the um, video down there. Let me make sure I type that in there, right? And um, I actually have the book available pretty much anywhere you can buy a uh, book online. So if you head on over to this spot here. Um, then you can actually come down here and find these. Now, if you buy it directly from me uh, on my web store here, use the coupon code HOLIDAY. You'll save 20% off your whole order buying it directly from me. So you can read about that. And I covered the details of where the rating systems came from and all that kind of weirdness from there. All right, well, that's all we have today for the business news. If you want to help support the channel, other than buying a book from my uh, Christian bookstore there, uh, you can also help support us over on Subscribestar. This is a uh, Switch to Linux-specific uh, supporter stream. You can come on over here and see the different membership levels and such as that. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.